Stay right there in your easy chair For 30 minutes of pleasure Don't you go, it's more than the show It's the talk of the desert It's the talk of the desert with Belinda Reed I just love coming home at night I turn around, she's a treasure Everyone and everywhere I go now, here's Melinda. Well, joining me on Talk of the Desert is international recording star, entertainer, singer, actor, and an all-around terrific man. And that's Ooh. our local Trini Lopez. Hi, Trini. Welcome back to Talk of the thank Desert. Thank you, honey. Thank you. Well, thank you, honey. Thank you. Now, You've got some exciting things going on in your life. Yeah. Not, but you just got back from a trip to Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka. I said that wrong, huh? No, that's okay. That's okay. Huh? Yeah, I, I could barely well, pronounce it myself. Tell our audience why you went to Sri Lanka. Uh, the money. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. You know, let's be honest. <laughs> let's be honest. That's right. That's right. Exactly. Money talks. Yes, it sure does. Yeah. And uh, but, Sri Lanka is right in... In case a lot of people don't know where Sri Lanka is, is right next to India. Yes, it's in the Indian Ocean. Aha, uh -huh, it's right yes, there. Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. Now, but but you went to unveil a new CD or album, however we're calling it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and because uh, you've got some original songs on there. Yes. And uh, but I can't understand why you didn't do it like in Manhattan or Los Angeles or something like that. You mean recording-wise? Yeah. Well, no. I mean, were you? That was your first. Wasn't your your first big show of your new um, CD? Was in uh, Sri Lanka. My brand new one now. Yeah. Um, I kicked it off here in Palm Springs. Okay. That was oh. Well, that's the best place to I, do it. Weren't you there? No, I wasn't. I thought I saw you there. <laughs> At, uh, at the Palm House. Uh -huh. It's a new restaurant. Okay. I don't think I was oh, there. Oh, honey, it was packed. I bet. It was great. It was Trini Lopez was there. Thank you. Yes. It was really nice. And uh, uh, I'm excited about this album because they're all original songs. And I've, I've, listen, you're not going to believe this. I've been recording since I was about 18. And I have never recorded an album with all original songs. Yeah. So you're doing that. Yeah. You did that. I, I did that. And... Uh, uh, may I show you a little bit of... Oh, uh, yes, absolutely. Okay. Okay. This is the, the cover. Whichever camera can catch this. I will. I think, I think you pointed to that camera, and I'll I think you're like doing this. just fine. And then I'll go like this. Yes, good. And it's, then you'll smile. Yes, good. <laughs> Got it all on. And angles. this is for you. Oh, you sweetheart. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, but... Okay, so this is an the first time you've ever done original yeah, songs, okay? Yeah, yeah. Can you read but the can you read the headline? The, on? Yeah, the uh, the title of this CD is called Trini Lopez. Trini Lopez. Mm -hmm. All original songs. That is such a creative title. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and it says 18 new tunes. 18 new tunes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Well, tell me about developing this new CD and who wrote the songs and, and how it all came about. Okay. I met, a, I met a gentleman who's a real nice person, and he's a very talented. And I met him about three, four, five years ago, something like that, here in, the, in, in this area, La Quinta, at a hotel, and there was a big party. And, and he wanted to meet me. He's a big fan of mine, first of all. His name is Joe. Joe Chevera, Chevera, Chevera. It's kind of a different kind of a name. And, uh, and he wanted to meet me. He said, I'm a big fan of yours, Trini, and this and that. And uh, he said, may I sing you a song? And there was a piano there. It happened to be a big grand piano there. I said, sure. You know, he, he was so friendly. And so he played me this song, and I liked it. I said, is, is that an original song? He said, yeah, I wrote it. I said, oh. I said, well, sing me another one. He said, OK. So he sang another one, and it was another good song. So uh, he was real nice and friendly. And, Let's get together sometime. Maybe we can write some songs together. I said, great, man, great. And we did about um, mm, six months later or so. And um, as it turned out, he and I have been writing some very nice songs. And we, we're getting along like brothers. I call him Joe Chevera, my, my songwriting amigo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. That's adorable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, we've been writing songs since then. And this is the first one that we have written, and we have three 
uh, albums already in mind to record before the end of the year. Really? Yeah. Well, you're busy. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. The next album I'm going to do with him is a, I want to call it All Original. No, no. <laughs> that, that, Wait, that's, this, that's this is All Original Songs. <laughs> <laughs> I stand to be correct. Yes, that's okay. Okay, the next one is going to be Love Songs. All organic love songs. What's organic love songs? I don't songs? know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's an all organic. It's like food, organic. Yes. They're yes, special. Yes. Okay. Uh huh. And and that's what we want to call and it. And these are all going to be originals too. All, all original okay. songs. That's what, I want to do that from now on because I've done enough covers. You know what that means. Yes. Okay. And and I was lucky that I did that because uh, I wasn't getting any. The reason people ask me all the time, why did you? Do, why did you do just 90% of all your albums? By the way, this is my 72nd CD. Wow. 72. Wow. And so people say, why did you all your career do uh, all uh, uh, cover songs? I said, because nobody was giving me any original songs. Nobody was sending me really? any original songs. They, they were all going to Elvis and, uh, and Bobby Darren and all these people, yeah. even though Bobby wrote a lot of his own songs. But a lot of songwriters, no, a lot of singers, they were getting uh, songwriting songs from songwriters and original songs and all of that, but I wasn't getting any. So I wrote a few, uh, one or two. I'm a lazy writer, by the way. Yeah, Melinda, I'm a lazy writer. What's a lazy writer? A lazy writer means you, you, don't, you should write songs, but you're too lazy to do it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I just wondered what your opinion was. It was a lazy. Yeah, writer, I, I'm yeah. a lazy. I've always been a lazy. No, I'm not a lazy person, but I've always been a lazy songwriter. And so uh, I guess as you, you get older, you know, your your thoughts and your your style changes and so on. It sure you know. does. And and so uh, all these years went by, and I was doing all these cover songs. But I was lucky because songs like "If I Had a Hammer," yep. "Lemon Tree," "Michael Rowe, You Bought a Shore." A song called I'm Coming Home, Cindy, which I wrote. Uh, America from West Side Story. And all this song, Kansas City. And La Bamba. La Bamba. Oh, yeah. my God. My yeah. biggest one in the world. Yes. And they were all already, already recorded by somebody else mm -hmm. and written by somebody else. Mm -hmm. And so I, I was lucky that I did something uh, that, that, that clicked for me. I changed the style of the song. I changed the arrangement. I, I put my own spin into all right. the songs, and I liked out. Yeah, I yeah. liked out. Yeah. So you need to put your own personality. You need to make uh -huh. the song your song, my song. not somebody else's. Even song. though somebody else wrote it. That's right. Yeah, exactly. but now, but now, these are going to be songs that are coming from my, from my gut. <laughs> okay, so your next CD is. Um, you, you, they're CDs, but are we calling them albums? Yeah, at all? everybody. Yeah. Well, they call them albums too. Well, yeah, maybe they, nobody knows what yeah. an album is any longer. <coughs> um, but um, so, so the next one is organic love songs. Now you said there was three mm, you were mm, going to release mm -hmm. this year. You are very good listener. Ah, I also read your press release. <laughs> <laughs> thanks to Orly. <laughs> uh, yeah, thanks to my secretary, yeah. Orly. Yes. Okay. Uh, let's see. The the next one after we do the organic love songs. I want to do something, an album I've never done before in my whole life. I want to do a gospel album. Yes. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen and amen. Yeah, yeah exactly. I love Christian songs. Yes. I love uh, 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 organic, no, that's my love album. I love, <laughs> <laughs> I love organic gospel songs. <laughs> I love gospel songs mm -hmm. very much since I was a kid. It, but Are uh, these going to be original ones? Original. Wow. We're going to write original songs. Great. E even in my gospel album. And then I'm going to do another thing that's kind of interesting. I want to do, a, I've never done a Christmas album. Can you believe Wait, it? Wait, out of 72, you've never done a Christmas no. album? No. And you know why, I think? Why? Because at all the time that I had agents and managers and this and that, they, they were all, all just interested in what I was selling at the time. And I wasn't selling Christmas songs. Yeah. Yeah. Like a lot of people, like Bing Crosby and all these people. I was selling commercial songs. you know what that means? Commercial songs? Well, meaning that you can sell it to a wide mass audience. There we go. There we go. And so I, I was doing that, and I was being a good boy. Yes, sir. You know, let's, let's go and do some more covers. <laughs> but uh, now, now that I can afford it, I, I want to do 
an all-original Christmas album. I think that's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. I love Christmas well, it songs. It sounds like Joe is a great writer with you two. It's yes, a great team. Yes, yes, yes. I mainly write the music, and he mainly writes the lyrics. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's what I was going to ask you is, you know, because because really to write the lyrics to a song, it's like writing a poem. Yes, yes. And I love poems very much. But not everybody can write a poem. No, that's it, for sure. It takes a lot of talent to write song, Christmas song, no, any kind of song. Yeah. To write songs, period, to write a love story, to write poems, to write a script for a movie. That takes a lot of talent. Oh, it sure does. But look at the talent you are, Trini. Well. I mean, you've got 72 albums slash CDs yes. uh, out on the market. What age did you start? Oh, you my God. You said 18? Uh, no, I was uh, eight. You were eight. Uh-huh. And by the time I was nine, I was already making money with my guitar. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Singing in school and so on. Okay, Jeff, we're going to take a sidetrack here. Okay, in the press release that I read, um, there was something about the Gibson guitar yeah. on your flight to Sri Lanka. Oh. <laughs> you got to tell the audience this. Well, this has happened several times, and uh, it's, I, I, I'm kind of proud of it because it's uh, kind of a, unusual for an airline like Cathay Pacific or, uh, or uh, any big uh, Pan Am and all these big uh, airlines. Uh, they, they really appreciate my guitar. And yes. instead of putting it on the bottom of the plane where you could break and everything, yeah. they put it right next to me on a first class seat. With but a its own seat? Yeah, its own seat with a seat belt. <laughs> <laughs> well, you just never know. You hey, never know. I just heard a, a recent re uh, news report that there was you know, a lot of um, wind problems on an airplane and they, people oh. were actually injured oh, on the honey, aircraft. Of you know? course. Sure, so, true, yeah, true, we, sure. we, we can't enter the neck of the uh, guitar, can no, we? No, That's no, what no. it's called, the neck, isn't it? it is, yes. Yes, the, okay. Yeah, but it could also be broken from the body of it, too. Sure, of you course. Know, and, and the interesting thing about my guitar, if I may say so, is that I designed that guitar. Yes, I know you did. I, I designed the guitar. There's the Trini Lopez uh -huh. a guitar. Gibson. Gibson guitar. Made by a big, the biggest company in the world for guitars is Gibson. And, uh, and not only do I have one model, but then I wanted to design another model for the, for the young rock and roll kids. And that's the one that's selling more than the other one, than We're, my first one. Okay, so what's the difference in design between your standard guitar that you uh -huh. originally um, designed uh -huh. to compare it to the one that's more for the rock and roll era? Right. The, the one that I did the first time, uh, I always like a full body on, on a woman, I mean on a guitar. <laughs> He didn't say that, did he? <laughs> he did. I didn't mean to say that. Oh. Darn it. <laughs> <laughs> I always like the full body on a guitar. <laughs> You've used that line before, I can tell you that. <laughs> anyway, I'm sorry, Trini, go and, ahead. Uh, and, uh, and because it, it, with a full body of a guitar, it's a bigger sound. Bigger sound. And I never could afford to have a drummer and a bass player and all that when I started my career. And so I did everything myself with my guitar. I did my own rhythm. I did my own afterbeat, things that a lot of people don't know you know, unless you're a musician. And I did all of that, and I needed a full-body guitar to be able to do that. So when I designed my first guitar for Gibson, which was like around 1966, 67, uh, I told him what I wanted, and, and I designed the body and this and that. And it was a big success. And then about a year later, I thought of, maybe doing a guitar uh, for, for the more of the rock and roll era, for the rock and roll guitars, guitar players. And so um, I, I wanted to have a thinner body because that's the way they, those kids like the thin body. It, it, uh, I wish I could find the word. It breaks through more out with an amplifier, you know, it's okay. just goes out there, wow, you know, and everybody goes, yeah. <laughs> then I have to plug my ears because the music yeah. is too loud. <laughs> there we go. There we go. That's because the, the guitar is made that yeah. way. Yeah. And then with an amplifier, of course. And, and I did some things to make it sound more, more rock. Yeah. And, and, and listen to this. After it came out, it was a bigger hit than the one that I, that I designed first. My guitar is the first one. It's, it's a Trini Lopez Gibson Deluxe. That's the name of the guitar. But then this one is a standard. And this standard, honey, you're not going to believe it. People like, have you heard of a singer named Bono? 
Yeah, slightly, yes. Uh -huh. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> He's a guitar player, has been playing my guitar for a long time. Have you heard of uh, Paul McCartney? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Are you name dropping? <laughs> yeah, I am. Uh, his guitar, I, and I, I don't like to do that. I don't like to name Oh, no, drop. not at all. But I need to because uh, this could be money for me. This could Yay. be a lot of money for me. Good. So, uh, thank you. So, uh, Paul McCartney is a guitar player from the, his group called Wings mm -hmm. that he had for quite a while. Right. His guitar plays my guitar. I need to tell me some more names. David Grohl. David, David Grohl. David Grohl is one of the most famous rock yeah. lead guitar players, and he loves my guitar. He loves it. There's a magazine on, uh, on a guitar magazine, international magazine, full page. He's kissing my guitar. <laughs> Well, I guess that's good. He's not kissing you, huh? Oh, God. I hope not. <laughs> I need one more person I'm missing. Another biggie. Maroon 5. Have you heard of Maroon 5? Yes. They're real popular. They play my guitar, too. Can you believe Excellent. it? That's that, fantastic. That, yeah, that standard guitar. Yeah. Yeah. That's just that's wonderful printing. Okay, so where are you recording your new CD albums? Uh, a lot of a lot of different places. Okay. I have recorded all over the world. I have even recorded in Africa. You have. Yeah. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. But this one we we're doing in Los Angeles, and I'm doing a lot of what they call uh, dubbing and mm -hmm. overdubbing and mm -hmm. uh, at, in my that's, at my house. That's well. That's the way it's done with the kind of electronic equipment we yeah. have today. It's oh, amazing. Oh, everything is portable. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, it's great. Yeah. It's great. So were most of the songs on the original song, mm -hmm. CD, <laughs> were they done here in Palm Springs Some, or L.A.? Okay. L.A. LA okay. and Palm Springs okay. also, yeah. And how many musicians do you have on the uh, CD? It depends on the songs. Okay. I, I don't use as many as I used to. When I first started my career and I had about two or three big hits, I remember Don Costa. Don yes, Costa, famous Absolutely. record producer. And he, he used to record Sinatra, My Way, and New York, New York, yeah, and all these yeah. songs, and, and, uh, and Johnny Mathis and everybody. He, he, he said, Trini, he said, you've been wanting to do this album for a long time, so I'm going to arrange it for you. And uh, I, I couldn't believe it. The album was called The Love Album. I love love songs, by the way. I love love You're songs. You're romantic, huh? I, I think so, a little bit, I guess. I guess <laughs> well, be, A little bit. I think you are bit. a lot. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, I wa always wanted to do real pretty love songs like Laura yes. and oh, My Funny Valentine song. and yeah. songs like that. And so he had 60 musicians for me. When I walked into the studio wow. where Sinatra always yeah. recorded, yeah. United Recording Studios on Sunset Boulevard in Hollywood, he had 60 musicians for me, and I counted them all. And he had, I had shallows and bassoons and, oh, my God, all kinds of instruments, oh, even a harp. And, and, but now I'm cutting down to about six or seven musicians at the most. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and it's expensive to... to Mm -hmm. You can't do 60 musicians hardly oh, anymore, honey. like a whole symphony oh, orchestra. God, it would cost a and fortune. Then, and, to, and to transport all of that, all the people around for yes. your shows and everything. Yes, yes. You know, Trini, I don't know, you've been a guest several times on Talk yes. of the Desert. And a few years ago, you told me that you, re you had retired in 1981. Right. Okay. <laughs> I know what you're going to say. <laughs> I'm confused. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> You just love it, don't you? Uh, I it's guess a, so. It's a, it's a part of you. It's part of your soul. It's, it's who you are. Yeah. So yeah. That you didn't really retire. You lied to him. You I, lied I, want, to I us, wanted to know? retire, yeah. but then the phone the phone kept ringing and ringing and ringing yeah. and ringing. To this day. And money. And, and the, <laughs> kept, yeah, and, and the money and everything. And, and so, if it's a really something special, if it's really something that I really want to do, uh, I do it. But if it isn't, uh, I, oh, you'd be surprised how many things I turned down all the time. Well, if you, you know, at your <clears> stage <throat> in your life, in your career, you don't need to take these little piddly um, mm -mm. gigs, mm -mm. engagements. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. You take what you want to do. Well, you're going to have fun, and you know the audience is going to enjoy your performance. And, of course, mm -hmm. I've, seen, I've been with, in your presence many times, and, of course, the audience just eats you up. Oh, thank you. Especially thank you, when you do La Bamba. Yeah, oh, that's my butter... Uh, Bread and butter song. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. My father so. taught me that song, honey, when I was eight, seven or eight. Really? Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of people want to know for you, for you, for your viewers. 
A lot of people want to know, what does La Bamba mean? That's a good question. I should have course. asked that. Yeah, write that down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> La Bamba means nothing. La Bamba means doesn't mean anything. anything. It's nope. just... It's just a title. Really? And I said, I said Dad, I, because my father was a singer. And, and, uh, and uh, that's where I learned my first songs. And, and uh, I said, I don't understand. I said, well, La Bamba, as far as I know, son, La Bamba was written in the 1920s. In the 1920s. And he said, he said, it was written for Mexican weddings. For oh, really? Me for Mexican weddings only. And it's a dance. It's a dance. Oh, I know that dance, too. You do, do uh -huh. you? My father used to dance. My father was a dancer, too, uh -huh. and a musician and an actor, my dad. And you took after him, didn't you? Uh -huh, I think so. Yeah. yeah. And he taught me my first songs when I was real young. Celito Lindo, which became a big hit for me. La Bamba, uh, Cucurucucu Paloma, Malagueña. All these songs, Solamente Una Vez, Amor, Besame Mucho. Mm -hmm. All big hits for me all over the world. Isn't that fantastic? Now, okay, you're talking about all over the world, but I heard also, because I read the press release, <laughs> that you have a song coming out about the Coachella Valley. Oh, yes. Yeah, tell yes. me about that. Thank you. Thank you for bringing it up. You're welcome. I tried to find it someplace on the internet so I could hear it, but I couldn't find you, it you, yet. I'll bring it to you. Okay, you oh, do yeah, that. Sure, and okay. we'll do another show. Okay. Uh, uh, the Coachella Valley, we call it the Coachella Valley Song. We call it okay. the Coachella Valley Song. And uh, it's about all about the Coachella Valley. It's all about the city. It's all about the palm trees. It's all about the mountains. It's all about the environment and all of the, 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 the great uh, spirit that, that there is in the Coachella Valley. Yeah, yeah. You know that no one has ever written a song about the Coachella Valley. Really? So you and Joe wrote this song? Yes, honey. Really? Yes, yeah, coming out as a single. Okay. And I'm going to get it for you. Okay, you do that? And, and it's going to be out in about two weeks. And you're the first one to hear about this. Oh, I am? You're the first oh, I feel television, so television I hostess. I feel so honored. Thank you, Trini. I yeah. appreciate that. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I can't wait to hear it. Okay. It probably talks about dates and palm trees. Everything. Huh? <laughs> and by shopping, how great it is to shop in the Coachella Valley. And tell me some of the things, honey, that I... Restaurants, casinos. Restaurants, casinos, all that gambling. Golf. Just, Oh, yeah. Yeah, you love golf, all don't of that, you? Yeah. yeah. And tennis. Yeah. Yeah. And shopping. Shopping and all oh, that. Oh, I have a black belt in shopping, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah. 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 I, don't, I, can, I can understand that. <laughs> well, now let's talk about where your, this CD is available, which is Trini Lopez, all original yeah, songs. Yeah. I have Amazon.com, iTunes, CD Baby, and is there anything else on TriniLopez.com? Especially TrinityLopez.com. TrinityLopez.com. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah, yeah. His website's terrific. You need to look at the yeah, pictures and wow. all the things and all the commentary. Yes, on honey. It. Yeah. And because of Aura Lee, Aura Lee Walker, my personal assistant. Yes, we know Aura Lee and we love Aura Lee. Oh, it's just great. I love her too. Yes. Twenty-two years she's been with me. Wow, fantastic. Twenty-two years, and she did a whole thing with my website, and it's great. All over the world, I get emails every day, every day and night. Oh my God! Emails. What else, honey? Uh, Facebook. Oh, Facebook. Facebook. Oh, so you're doing social media now too, oh, aren't yeah. you? Good for you. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm learning a little bit. Well, that's good. I don't know too much about electronics and this and that. You know. That's okay. But she knows. But all you see, about you it. can give it to somebody else, like Orly, who's I'm sure is an expert she on is. all of this. She is. She is. And so you don't. You you just perform. You know. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah you, know. I just collect the money. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and, yeah. and Orly just says, he, you just sing. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Supposedly. Well, but you play the guitar, too. I play the guitar a little yeah, bit. Yeah, just a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Well, considering you have a Gibson guitar named after you, yeah. you better play the guitar. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I've been doing it. My guitar came out in 67, and it's still going strong. My guitars. Terrific. My two guitars. Okay, we only have three minutes left of this okay. half hour, Mr. Lopez. Sure. What have we not covered that you want our audience to know about? Well, let's see, my, my new single coming out, the Coachella Valley song, okay. that I'm on the internet, trinilopez.com, and all of Amazon is selling my, my single and my album. And, and iTunes and CD Baby. iTunes and CD Baby. Anything else, honey? You might want to give her the name how to get on your Facebook. It's not Trini. It's all your Facebook page is not Trini, she just said. What is said. it, honey? 
Trinidad. Trinidad. That's Trinidad. My, that's my real name. Yes. Well, no, that's my full name. That's your it, Trinidad Lopez. Uh huh. Is your a Facebook third. page the third? The third. <laughs> the right. third. Th okay. Yeah. <laughs> good. Yeah. Well, good. I'm glad we got to know yeah. that. Yeah. Because I'm sure yeah. I'm sure Orly is up updating your Facebook page. Yeah. All oh, the time. yeah. 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 So, honey, when people want to click into my Facebook to send me a message or whatever, is Trinidad what? Lopez. The third. And then they can get in. Yeah. Okay. And watch and look at your Facebook page. Yeah, and look How at my exciting. face too. And okay, so <laughs> besides, okay, so now these other two CDs are going to be out by the end of the year. By the end of the year, okay. between now and Christmas. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah especially the Christmas album. Well, it better be. <laughs> in fact, here we are in August, September, and you should have recorded it several months ago to get it out by well, December. Well, I'm always a little late. You know, with us Latinos, everything is mañana. <laughs> Oh, your book. Oh, or my said, God. We only got a minute left. Okay, quick. 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 All right, Lee. Oh, Say that again, honey. Be out by Christmas. By Christmas, be out my, my, my autobiography will be out by Christmas. Great. And so R. R. Lee wrote my life story. She did. It's taken her 10 years. Well, fantastic. Yeah. It's supposed to be you writing it. Uh, well, uh, I am. You're writing am, it together. Yeah, uh huh. Uh, Trini Lopez, thank you for your enthusiasm and for in, and sharing your talent internationally with the world. Thank you. It's been fantastic. And thank you for being a good friend. You sweetheart. Yeah. And thank you for your CD. Okay. I hope you and, like it. Oh, I'm sure I, I got will. all kinds of music in there. That's terrific. Reggae, ballads, rock, everything. That's right. Terrific. Love well, songs. Trini, thank you very much for, for joining me and thank you audience for joining us. For more information, email TOTDTV at questoffice.net and visit talkofthedesert.tv on the web. It's time.